I am Dr. Ruby Dhar and I am a BioCare DBT scientist working at my sponsor institute, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Today I am talking about module 3, Cell Growth and Division, Cell Cycle Part 1. Now to just start with the introduction about cell growth and division. In unicellular organism, cell division is the means of reproduction. In multicellular organism, it is the means of tissue growth and maintenance. Survival of the eukaryotes depends upon interaction between many cell types and it is very essential that a balanced distribution of types to be maintained. Now, just to maintain this balance, that's why the cell division and proliferation is a highly regulated process. The growth and division of different cell populations are regulated in different ways, but the basic mechanism are similar throughout multicellular organism. The term cell growth is used in the context of biological cell development and cell division. Various aspects of cell growth and cell division will be discussed in this module with the following objectives in mind. Now to start with, the first objective is why cells need to grow and divide. The second will discuss about cell division, the two main methods of cell division, mitosis and cytokinosis. Number three, genetic material, difference in packaging between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. What are chromosomes? And then what is the difference between mitosis and meiosis? Number four objective deals with the rate of cell growth and cell cycle. How long is the cell cycle phases vary? Number five is bacterial cell division. Number six, eukaryotic cell division. Number six about various phases of cell cycle and number eight will be talking about the various regulators of cell cycle and at the end we'll talk about what happens if there is an uncontrolled cell division. Now coming up to the first question why cell needs to grow and divide. Living things grow because it produces more and more cells. Now the two important criteria why the cell need to divide. Number one, the cells of a human adult are similar to a human baby, but the only difference is they are more in number. Now larger cells have difficulty transporting enough nutrients across their membrane. Thus they need to divide and maintain their surface area to volume ratio. Cells are limited in size because the outside, that is the cell membrane, must transport the food and oxygen to the parts inside. As the cell gets bigger, the outside is unable to keep up with the inside because the inside grows faster rate than the outside. Now the second important part is the larger the cells become, it plays a demand on its DNA. Now DNA is the genetic material of all the cells and it stores all the information and as the cell increases in size it usually has to make up with the, uh, the DNA does not make extra copies as the cell grows hence if the cell grow without any limit that would lead to information crisis thus to maintain the cell size ratio and increase their number the cells divide into two daughter cells using an orchestrated process called cell division. Now coming up to cell division, process where a cell splits into two identical daughter cells. It occurs in two main phases. The main function of mitosis are growth and repair. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus. The nucleus is the membrane-bound organelle inside a cell that holds DNA 
and DNA is a genetic material. In order for our cells to reproduce, they must be capable of dividing into new cells. This means they must be able to divide the nucleus. Eukaryotic cells like humans have a nucleus that contain the genetic information called DNA while prokaryotic like bacteria cells do not. In prokaryotic cells the DNA just floats around in the cell. The second important step for cell division is cytokinosis which is division of the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm cell division is the breaking apart of the cytoplasm of a single eukaryotic cell divide into two daughter cell. Cytoplasmic division begins during or after the late stage of nuclear division in mitosis and meiosis. Now the third objective is genetic material. Before cell division occurs, the cell replicates or copies all its DNA. This replication of DNA solves the problem of information storage because each daughter cell gets one complete set of genetic information. Difference in packaging of the genetic material between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes do not possess nuclei. Instead, their DNA is organized into a structure called nucleoloid. The nucleoloid is a distinct structure and occupies a defined region of the bacterial cell. This structure is however dynamic and is maintained and remodeled by the actions of a range of histone like proteins which associate with the bacterial chromosome. Eukaryotes on the other hand nuclear DNA are packed by proteins into a condensed structure called chromatin. Now what are chromosomes? The chromatin undergoes further condensation to form the chromosomes. This allows the very long DNA molecules to fit into the cell nucleus. The structure of chromosomes and chromatin varies through the cell cycle. The cells of every organism have a specific number of chromosomes. For example, the cells of fruit flies have 8 chromosomes and humans have 46 chromosomes. Chromosomes are not visible in most cells except during cell division. Well, before cell division, each chromosome is replicated or copied. Each pair of chromatids is attached to an arc called the centromere. They are like the twisted tie that folds the chromosome together. Each chromosome in the pair are identical in shape and size but the genetic information might vary one from each parent. A cell that contains both chromosome of a homologous pair is termed diploid. In a human the diploid number is 2n which is equal to 46. n represents the number of homologous pair. A cell that has only one chromosome of each homologous pair is termed as haploid or monoploid. In human, the haploid or the monoploid number of human egg or sperm cell is n equal to 3. There are no homologous chromosomes in either cell. Coming to the next objective of difference between mitosis and meiosis. Now the two important route through which cell divide and reproduce are mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is a process of cell division that results in two genetically identical daughter cells developing from a single parent cell. Meiosis on the other hand is the division of a germ cell evolving two fissions of the nucleus and giving rise to four gametes or sex cells which possessing half the number of chromosome of the original cell. Mitosis is a form of asexual reproduction. 
This allows an organism to clone exact copies of the original cell. This method of reproduction is rapid and effective. However, as the offsprings are identical to the mother, there is no mechanism for introducing diversity. On the other hand, meiosis on, is a type of sexual reproduction. It is a special type of cell division necessary for sexual reproduction in eukaryotes. The cells produced by meiosis are gametes, namely egg and sperm. The fourth objective covers the rate of cell growth and cell cycle. The coordinated production of new cells during the cell cycle and growth, which is the increase in biomass of individual cells, is essential for both development of multicellular organisms and fitness of microorganisms. In order to maintain long-term size homeostasis, cells must average in double in size before they divide. In most organisms, this is uh, accomplished by establishing a dependency on growth for cell cycle entry. Cells typically initiate a new cell cycle in late G1 phase only once a critical size is attained. Most tissue of the body grow by increasing their cell number, but this growth is highly regulated to maintain a balance between different tissues. In adults, more cell division is involved in tissue renewal rather than growth. Many types of cells undergoing continuous replacement. For example, as for repair, we all cut ourselves from time to time and the cells along the edges of the cut undergo mitosis to repair the cut. The same is true for broken bones. The cells along the edges of the bone or the skin, they undergo continuous mitosis so that they can repair the break. So skin cells are a good example which go constantly being slogged off and replaced. In this case, the mature differentiated cells do not divide, but their population is renewed by division of immature stem cells. On the other hand, liver mature cells maintain, remain capable of dividing, allow it to grow for regeneration after injury. Some cells in human are prevented from dividing by certain molecules produced by the nearby cells. Hence, they have reduced capacity to renew damage or disease cells. Examples of such tissues include heart muscle, nerve cell of the central nervous system, and the lens cells in mammals. Maintenance and repair of these cells is limited to replacing intracellular components rather than replacing entire cells. Now, duration of the cell cycle phases varies from cell to cell. For a typical rapidly proliferating human cell with a total time in 24 hours, the G1 phase last maximum which is 11 hours, S phase is 8 hours and then mitosis takes within 1 hour. Some cells can divide much more rapidly. Budding yeast for example can progress through all four stages of the cell cycle in only 90 minutes. Even shorter cell cycle like 30 minutes or less occurs in early embryonic cells. Shortly after fertilization of the egg in this case, however, cell growth does not take place. Instead, these cells, early embryonic cells, rapidly divide the egg cytoplasm into smaller cells. There is no G1 or G2 phase and DNA replication occurs very rapidly in these early embryonic cell cycles, which therefore consist of very short S phases alternating between M phases. Now, the fifth objective, bacterial cell division. Bacterial cell growth is called binary fission. Bacteria will grow and grow and then split in half into two identical cells. Bacterial cell division is much more simpler 
than mitosis. Cell division in bacterial cell begins with the replication of DNA which is carried out by a set of enzymes that generally form a ring called the FTSZ ring at the site of replication. The overall process of cell division results in the formation of two DNA molecules. The bacterium with two DNA molecules separate into two cells by a process known as binary fission. Now coming up next is the cell cycle. Cell cycle describes the life of a eukaryotic cell. The cell cycle is a repeating sequence of cellular growth and division during the life of an organism. A cell spends 90% of its time in the first three phases of the cell interface. Number four, the cell growth, the G phase, a cell grows rapidly and carries out its routine function. Cells that are not dividing remain in the G1 phase. Now, synthesis takes place in the S phase. There where the DNA is copied during this phase, at this phase or end of this phase, each chromosome consists of two chromatids attached at the centromere. At the G2 phase, it's uh, G2 preparations are made for the nucleus to divide. Now final step is mitosis, the process during which the cell divides and the nucleus of the cell divides into two nuclei. Number, the last process is called cytokinesis where the cytoplasm splits and finally there is a two cell. Now the various phases of cell division, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and the final step called the cytokinesis. Now just to describe what happens in various phases of the cell cycle, we will go further in detail. So to start with, we the, is the interface. Now the cell grows and replicates its DNA and the centrals. Prophase, this is the longest phase of the cell cycle. The chromatin condenses into chromosomes. The centrals separate and a spindle begins to form. The nuclear membrane breaks down. And now what are centrals? Two tiny structures located in the cytoplasm near the nuclear envelope. The water spindles, it's a fan-like microtubule structure that helps separate the chromosomes. Now coming up next is the metaphase. The chromosome lines up across the center of the cell. Each chromosome is connected to a spindle fiber at its centromere. It is the shortest phase of a cell cycle. Now after metaphase we see anaphase. The sister chromatids separate into individual chromosomes and are moved apart. The chromosomes are being pulled to the opposite side of the cell towards the centrioles and after this is done we reach the telophase the final step of mitosis the chromosomes gather at opposite ends of the cell and lose their distinct shape two new nuclear membranes form chromosomes are at the opposite poles and the nuclear envelope reforms because it has to divide in the nuclear into two parts. Next after the nucleus is divided, the cell prepares itself for cytokinosis. The cytoplasm pinches in half. Each daughter cell has an identical set of duplicate chromosomes. Now 
Now coming up we are discussing about the cell cycle regulators. It was discovered that there are two types of regulator proteins. One, those that occur inside the cell and regulate the cell division and two that occur uh, outside the cell. So the number one inside regulators are called internal regulators. Proteins that respond to events inside the cell are called internal regulators. Internal regulators that allow the cell cycle to proceed only when certain processes have happened inside the cell. Several scientists including Tim Hunt from Great Britain and Mark Krishner from United States discovered that cells in mitosis contain a protein that when injected into a non-dividing cell would cause a mitotic spindle to form. It was found that the amount of this protein in the cell rose and fell in time with the cell cycle and thus these proteins are called cyclings because they keep fluctuating between cell cycling. Cyclins regulate the timing of the cell cycle in eukaryotic cells. Cyclins are known to function as the regulatory subunit of heterodimeric protein kinase complexes that also contain a catalytic subunit with serine threonine kinase activity known as cyclin dependent kinase or the CDK. Now we will be talking about the external regulators. Proteins that respond to events outside the cell are called external regulators. These direct the cell to speed up or slow down during the cell process. Growth factors are among the most important external regulators. They stimulate the growth and division of the cells. Growth regulators are very important in embryonic development and wound healing. Now what happens if the cell cycle is not regulated or in a condition of uncontrolled cell growth? Why is cell growth regulated so carefully? It is cell growth and division is not regulated properly then this will lead to uncontrolled cell growth and division leading to cancer or tumor formation. Cancer is a consequence of uncontrolled cell growth. Cancer is a disorder in which some of the body's own cells lose the ability to control growth. Cancer cells do not respond to the signals that regulate the growth of most cells like the inhibitory signals. As a result, they divide uncontrollably and form masses of cells called tumors that can damage the surrounding tissue. Cancer cells may break loose from tumors and spread throughout the body because they have the ability to invade and disrupt normal activities causing serious medical problems and even death. There are certain carcinogens that can cause this to happen such as tobacco, radiation exposure and even a viral infection. Talking about tumor, an abnormal mass of cell that results from ungoverned cell division. They can be benign, cells which remain in the mass, generally they are not threat to life because they are not malignant. Next is malignant type which can undergo metastasis because they break away from the center point and they spread in the entire body. Now just to summarize this module, number one, in unicellular organism, cell division is the means of reproduction. In multicellular organism, it is the means of tissue growth and maintenance. Two, very important, cell needs to grow and divide to maintain the surface area to volume ratio and distribution of its nutrients and genetic material equally to the daughter cells. Number three, cell cycle is the process where a cell splits into two identical daughter cells. It has two major components to it, mitosis and cytokinesis. 
Number four, the genetic information that is passed on from one generation of cells to the next is carried by chromosomes. Chromosomes are made up of DNA which carries the cell's coded genetic information and it has an assembly of DNA and proteins. The two important routes through which cells divide and reproduce are mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is a process of cell division that results in two genetically identical daughter cells developing from a single parent cell. On the other hand, meiosis is the division of a germ cell involving two fission giving rise to four gametes or sex cells. Bacterial cells divide asexually by a process called binary fission. Number 8. The cell cycle describes the life of a eukaryotic cell. The cell cycle is a repeating sequence of cell growth and division during the life of an organism. Number 9. The cell spends 90% of its time in the first three phases of the cell cycle, which is the interface. Number 10. G1 of cell grows rapidly and carries out its routine function. Cells that are not dividing remain in G1 function. The S phase or the synthesis phase, the cell's DNA is copied during this phase. At the end of this phase, each chromosome consists of two chromatids attached at the centromere. In the G2 phase, preparations are made for the nucleus to divide. Number 12. Uh, the various cell cycle phase through which the cell undergo mitosis are prophase, anaphase, metaphase, telophase and cytokinesis. 13 is uh, cell growth is regulated by various factors as we discuss internal and external factors. Cell cycle is closely monitored by a set of proteins called cyclins and cycling dependent kinases and this is the end of module 3 and thank you so much for your attention.